Hey, hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are joining from today. Welcome to this LinkedIn Live. Hi, Michael. Hi, Josh. Hi, Emma. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling? <laughs> Great. Um, I think we need to start by explaining why we're all wearing the same hoodie. <laughs> the best part of the webinar is our hoodies right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think this was a, just Michael, why don't you, why don't you explain what the hoodie is about? Yeah, so um, it's kind of about our, with the project. We you know, wanted to make sure we're a team, not just uh, Stantec, but everyone on site. Uh, so our drone team, our rope access team, uh, the DOT, uh, our, our traffic control folks, um, everyone there got a hold of these sweatshirts at least. And uh, we wear them quite frequently. They're very, yeah, a little back that shows the bridge on them and all sorts of stuff. So. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, it was it was actually a great uh, gift that Emma and I got um, after a hard day of work um, in the Okanahan Bridge with you. Um, so yeah, thank you again for that for that presence. Um, so let's maybe get started with uh, some introductions. Uh, Michael, why don't you go first? Yeah, so my name is Michael Marshall. Uh, I'm a professional engineer uh, at Stantec. Uh, been doing bridge and tunnel inspection for over 10 years now and uh, a little bit of asset management as well. Uh, I'm a Sprat level one, so a rope access technician, which you're going to see in some of the slides, and I'm also a drone pilot. Cool. Thank you. Um, Josh, you go next, please. Hi, Josh Sexton here. I sit in Bluefield, Virginia with Stantec. I'm our reality capture technology manager, and I also um, operate our global uh, UAS program here at Stantec. So it's exciting to be here today. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're delighted to have you here, both of you. Um, Emma. Yes. Hi, everyone. So my name is Emma Richmond. I am an enterprise account executive with Skydio. I'm also a Part 107 certified pilot. Um, I'm responsible for helping Skydio customers identify and solve business problems, usually in the form of scaling a drone program. Um, I'm also responsible for assisting our customers throughout the entire evaluation process of our technology. So I do a lot of work with engineering firms like Stantec, utilities, oil and gas, uh, just to name a couple. Yeah, cool. Thank you. And for those who don't know me, um, I'm Alicia. Um, I work as a solutions engineer for Scadio. Um, actually, I'm helping Emma on the technical side of things. So helping enterprise customers um, such as Stantec optimize their workflows with Scadio hardware and software. Um, my background is in surveying. I've been in the drone mapping slash photogrammetry space uh, for about 10 years now and have worked with um, infrastructure and operators and a few, a couple of key uh, vendors in the space, such as Trimble and uh, Ventry Systems. Um, so yeah, welcome again to, to everyone. Um, excuse me. So for those who don't know the bridge, the, the project we're going to be presenting here today um, is about the inspection of the Michael Callahan Tillman Bridge, uh, which is in front of the Hoover Dam. Which you, you might know that one better because it's been Part of a couple of movies, I think, big movies. Maybe you can, like, do you know which ones? Transformers. If anyone's seen that, it's a great movie. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, during the last week of January, uh, Emma and I and, and Skydio team had the privilege to work side by side with the breach inspection team from Stantec um, on the inspection of uh, the mentioned breach. And uh, just wanted to share a couple of facts about the breach that I was looking up yesterday. The bridge has a length of 1,900 feet, which is about 600 meters, um, and 1,060 feet uh, of span. The striking arch overpass connects Arizona to Nevada over the Colorado River. It's actually a stunning place if you have the chance to go um, and visit it. Um, and it's the second tallest bridge in the USA, according to Wikipedia. Couldn't find a, <laughs> a more reliable source, so apologies for that. Um, this was definitely the large, largest infrastructure project that I've done yet with Skydio. Um, and I wanted to mention that, kind of like to set the context, our collective goal, um, if I can say it that way, was to assess the value of autonomous drones, of Skydio solutions, uh, for bridge inspection for 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 the for the Santec team, um, and the potential of integrating this technology from operational practices, as we will see and talk about later, all the way up to more reliable and informed business decisions. Um, so that's kind of like the 
context of it. And now I'm going to pass it on to you, Michael, and maybe ask you if you could talk a little bit more about, um, you know, pre skydio or pre-drones, uh, what those traditional inspection, inspection methods look like. Yeah, so um, outside of the Ocala and Tillman Bridge, a traditional inspection is typically two people, uh, a team leader and an assistant out on site, and they might have paper and maybe an iPad on site to take their notes. Um, and so the end result is essentially a written report with a few photos on the end um, that's delivered to the, the owner of the bridge. Um, but here in Ocala and Tillman is, is an example of how we use some other techniques such as rope access, uh, snooper trucks, maybe bucket trucks. And you can see here in this picture, we have a rope access climber on the side there. Um, with the snooper truck helping us inspect the superstructure. Uh, so prior to probably 2017 or so, um, it was solely done with rope access and snooper work. Um, so the climbers would rappel down the columns and use what's called a rebelay technique uh, with rope access and look at the arch, look at the columns, and then they would also rappel the columns individually. Um, but around 2017, 2019, we started integrating in uh, drones to the approach columns. Um, and those were just the traditional manual drones um, looking up and down the approach columns to try and relieve some of that climbing that we had done uh, for two weeks. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where it originated, I guess. And then we kind of moved into the the Skydio side. Michael, can you can you share or elaborate a little bit more on traditional drones and kind of what that that means to you guys? Yeah. So traditionally, or in the hit, in in the past, we've uh, subbed out some of the work to uh, specific drone uh, pilots or companies that that give us the the drone work, and as as we've melded into the Skydio system, uh, we've kind of gone away from that and gone toward more towards the autonomous drones and what we're going to talk about here in a bit. But essentially, um, before we've just paired a bridge engineer with the pilot or the company being used, and they would stand alongside and make sure that the data capture was sufficient for the inspection. Thank you. And just maybe um, you can chip in on and kind of like explain how how Stantec started looking into into drones. What were the main key drivers um, for Stantec to start looking into these you know new methods or new technologies for um, inspection uh, process? Sure. Um, you know, I think UAS provides a wonderful platform when you don't need a hands-on inspection and you're actually gathering a lot more data and you can start comparing that data over time. So one thing that everyone wants to talk about is a digital transformation. And as part of our digital transformation, we're doing better data capture. So, you know, we started with video and static photos. And now we're moving into 3D models, virtual twins, and then ultimately we want to have digital twins for a lot of these assets. So specifically, you know, it's capturing data. A lot of times maybe we don't need um, climbers or bucket trucks for hands-on access. Maybe it's just a routine survey. So we can take a first pass with a UAS. And something that's often, um, you know, not referenced is drones are a great, great equalizer too. You know, maybe we have staff with physical limitations, you know, a drone levels the pay playing field for a lot of those individuals. It takes our load off our staff. It makes their job generally easier. And then it also is able to involve more staff. So it helps us leverage our staff better. And then it also promotes those people that may have physical limitations. It promotes their career because this is another tool that they have so they can be engaged. So it's just a win-win for us. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and so I think you touched on a couple of points, um, you know, about Skydio, so moving on from your, you know, your journey, looking into drones, uh, starting a drone program at Stantec, and now um, moving towards Skydio. Can you tell us a little bit more about that journey? What were the main, um, maybe like the, the key value of like, you know, integrating Skydio into your portfolio and what, what are the, maybe the, the aspects that you are already seeing or the impact that you are already, are already seeing with uh, integrating SCADI in your, in your inspection workflows? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're real happy with Skydio. Uh, we've been flying drones at Stantec since 2013. Um, we purchased our first drone. We actually had a full global governance by 2016. So we have a lot of stick time with our 70 pilots globally with drones, but those have all been manual drones. And we're seeing a big push in the inspection uh, market, specifically with transportation. 
um, in the built environment that we're leveraging this technology in new ways. And it makes sense for us to have our engineers behind the sticks because they know what they're looking for. And this is a tool mm -hmm. for them to have aerial inspection, uh, limited access, hard to reach areas, and they can focus their efforts in getting there. And maybe they don't have to be in a bucket truck or uh, with rope access, it lowers congestion. And with the autonomous drones, uh, the drones are getting smaller, the footprint smaller, uh, they're easier, they're more portable, you can carry them on an airplane now. And the learning curve is much lower with a Skydio drone, we found versus you know our, our typical inspection rig, which is a Falcon 8, which is also a very good drone, but it takes a much higher um, level of training and then it still doesn't have the obstacle avoidance that the Skydio does. So um, for a lot of routine inspection, the Skydio just makes sense just because of that built-in um, object avoidance, uh, 3D scan, all the autonomy that it offers. It's just a fantastic platform for this type of inspection. Michael, anything to add there? I see. Um... You're, you're... No, I think that was great. Yeah. The, the one thing I'll add there is, you know, with the with the traditional drones, typically you have a pilot and also someone who's, you know, the visual observer, possibly operating some of the camera controls. Uh, so there's a lot of folks on site that you're using, plus the the engineer that's also looking over, you know, how is the data capture being done? Um, but with Skydio, we've been able to kind of consolidate a lot of that with, especially with 3D scan into one single person, the engineer, the, the 3D scan and the, and the data collection all into one hat essentially. And um, it's mm. been a huge game changer. Yep. And Emma, maybe I can ask um, you to, like, what would be the main, like, for Stantec, but also, like, you, you've been involved with so many other enterprise customers, what are the main key, uh, maybe some other aspects that, um, you know, like, for example, that we're design, assemble, and supporting in, in the States, I think that's yeah. that's one, do you want to elaborate on that as well? Yeah, I think, I think Michael um, and Josh said it beautifully. I think something that I hear from a lot of customers is there's typically this kind of complexity gap when it comes to starting a drone program or scaling a drone program. A lot of times I hear that maybe they have a couple of drones, but they just don't really know where to go from there. And they don't know who they want to have, you know, piloting the drones. They don't want to have to go and, you know, hire, hire expert pilots. So for an organization like Stantec, for a lot of customers that I'm speaking with, I think scalability and ease of use is something that's really important and really critical. Um, and it leads to just a lot more value for the organization. Um, a lot of times companies can, you know, start flying maybe a traditional drone and they just can't necessarily find value out of it just because of the sca scalability reason. I think that's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, from a like Skydio partnership perspective, um, I think this is something that's really unique about Skydio and you know, we're, we're definitely not naive to the fact that scaling a drone program, it can be very difficult. It can feel very scary for a lot of companies who haven't started. Um, so we, we take a lot of pride in helping our customers from the very start of their journey to identify, analyze business problems that they have. Um, and that can be solved by scaling a drone program. Um, and we, we do this by taking a very consultative approach, right? So helping our customers evaluate the Skydio drone technology from start to finish. And this can be in the form of, you know, a lot of different ways. So technical workshops, value assessments, and then in a lot of cases, and in, in this case we're discussing today for Stantec, that could be us coming on site and doing a proof of concept, a workshop, and getting really hands-on with our customers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. And it is a good example, like you and me going on site, um, you know, with Michael, Josh and the team and helping them to truly assess the the value of our solutions. Um, and, but, but it didn't stop there. We were continuing growing and, and understanding their needs and requirements and helping them to, you know, be successful um, integrating this technology and optimizing um, the workflows. Um, just for those who are maybe less familiar with Skydio, I just wanted to mention very briefly, and you can find all this information online, um, but when we talk about Skydio autonomy and that obstacle avoidance, as we call it, um, the drone is equipped with six 4K cameras, um, which you see the, the six bubbles there, so that would be kind of like what the six cameras see when, when the vehicle is flying, um, and we have a high-performance processor on board, which um, both together create a map a 3D map of the surroundings, allowing the, the, the drone to understand its environment and taking decisions real time, as you can see um, in those couple of videos. Um, and using the 3D map, 
um, the drone can navigate and avoid obstacles in real time, even in complex and dynamic environments. Um, this video here is from a um, another tool that we have, which is called the Super Zoom, which allows you as well to uh, zoom out for a six, 360 degrees, which is super cool when you are like in a very tight and confined space. It gives you like a very good overview um, of uh, the environment. Um, yeah, so just wanted to kind of like set a, uh, for those who haven't seen or haven't, uh, are, aren't as familiar with Skydio technology as, as we are. Um, and maybe just to um, add a little bit more of, um, you know, value into the conversation. Um, uh, we've talked about the pain, uh, we've talked about the value, um, maybe high level value. Why don't we, maybe Michael, if you could talk more about, you know, the specific, the, the, the changes you've seen. And I, and I would love to actually do this webinar again in a year from now, in, a two, in two years from now, because I, <laughs> I think these numbers are going to be like super interesting. Um, the, we started, to, we started walk, working together like a few months ago, but you've already seen a massive impact on certain operational numbers. So why don't you talk more about that, please? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, traditionally before we, we brought drones in, uh, this Ocala and Tillman project would take around two weeks of at least eight climbers. And then you have all the rest of the staff on board as well. Uh, operators for the snooper trucks, three to four of those. Uh, trap control managers, at least four, possibly more, and an officer. Uh, and of course, there's, there's more of the team on site, but I would say at a minimum, that's what you're looking at for two weeks. Uh, by just integrating drones, we're able to bring that down to just one week. Uh, we bring, we keep that same staff of eight and then the operators and such, uh, but we're able to bring in a drone team and just look at a part of the bridge and completely reduce the staff down to say a drone team of three or so. Um, and one week of drone work eliminates, or uh, uh, one week of drone work eliminates a week of climbing work. Uh, but then when we were bringing in Skydio, um, the obstacle avoidance and other things that we had just talked about, uh, it also reduced that down to just a couple of days. Um, so traditionally, we've been able to use manual drones to look at corners of the uh, the columns and go up and down and use video that we're going to talk about here in a bit. Uh, but with Skydio, we are able to do that exact same data capture uh, in just two and a half days. And why was that? It's, it's the pilot did not have the fear of crashing into the bridge, uh, did not have that, even though we would lose GPS reception when you get up to the top and kind of tuck yourself into that steel girder, you're still in full control and, and object avoidance. So you're not in that fear of hitting the bridge and you can get close to capture that data. Uh, so with that, the data capture was much quicker. For sure, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's a good transition actually into, yeah, our next slide here. So mm -hmm. I, I guess question for you, Michael, from me, um, you know, so, so we know that when making, you know, purchasing decisions, organizations typically need to consider the financial impact, right? So can either you or maybe Josh, whoever wants to chime in here, can you guys walk us through your thought process when it comes to justifying an investment in technology like this for bridge inspections? Yeah, I, I could start with the, the bridge side at least, you know, and in, in, the, in the terms of this project, when you take away that amount of labor force and, and hours uh, throughout the week, you can take it down from, let's say, a $200,000 cost in two weeks down to about 105000 in a week. Um, so that alone helps you justify the, the purchase of a drone or some of the software that comes on board with it. Um, and then Josh, from your perspective, taking it from there. So I, I won't talk about the numbers. I'll just talk about the impact. Um, you know, with the traffic control, it's a major operation. There's a lot of folks involved in a survey like this, especially a big one like Ocala and Tillman. You know, there's a lot of congestion and everything we do, we try to do safely, you know, but we're taking the load off of our individuals. They're not having to climb, you know, we're able to, access those um, assets from a safe spot on the ground. And, you know, we're not creating traffic congestion because we don't have to have those folks on the deck, you know, blocking the lane of traffic. So uh, just the impact to, you know, the operations of the highway in this instance are just huge. Yeah, and actually uh, following that, I would like to read a question for you guys from Ross. Um, did the EOR, e OR, sorry, have a contingency plan for rope access, if anything required a closer look, or is the drone tech really advanced enough to meet the necessary standard of care if an early defect is discovered? Yeah, you nailed it, Ross. Uh, one thing that we're looking for is, is making sure we have the bridge engineer on site during the data capture, right? So they're reviewing not just the, the pictures and the video being taken, but also the 3D scan. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, when something might be seen, uh, we can at least uh, 
you know, relay that back to the rope access technicians and say, hey, we, we need to actually repel this and take a look at a certain location. And that actually saves time as well. You know, we can hone in the exact locations where we need hands-on access to and not necessarily just drone everything. Because in the end, you know, hands-on access is still kind of part of our industry. Uh, but the drone helps us key in on those certain locations that we might want to have more attention to. And one thing you may want to bring up, Michael, is the drone can actually get to the spots that rope access or bucket trucks have a hard time getting to. So if they see something that they can't easily assess, you can send the drone in to take a closer look for them. Yep. Um, thanks for answering that. And um, yeah, like I, I think one of the biggest lessons for me being on site with you guys was um, like, you know, moving on to the, your specific journey with Skydio and, you know, um, from starting from zero to capturing high quality data with, with our solutions. And um, being part of that journey, I could see the massive impact. Like we were in on site for a few hours, Michael, I don't know if you remember this. Um, we did a few flights, uh, just kind of like testing uh, what was the best approach and which we will we will talk about a, a bit more about um in the next slides uh, in terms of like flight planning and, and planning your mission but what i wanted to say is that a few hours within i think it was before lunch you were like this is insane like this is just a, a you know we've uh, we've captured all the data uh, potentially that i needed for for this specific inspection and i was expecting to have to be flying for a couple of days or something like that so that like it was an immediate value um, for you and that was for me it was yeah incredibly rewarding to see that on site um yeah yeah i mean it, i had experience with you know the other drone work that we've done on site and you know having a week mm -hmm. long time it, you have to account for the wind conditions and things that we're going to go over but you know i expected things to take a lot longer uh but when we started you know using 3d scan things we're going to see here yeah you could immediately see you know, we're collecting this data rapidly and, and accurately as well. It's uh, we didn't necessarily we actually collected more data in a smart, shorter amount of time with Skydio. So it was. Yeah, it was a great yeah. experience. Um, and actually, maybe for um, people who joined today that, that I expect and I, and I hope that they will be, uh, um, you know, looking into Skydio uh, soon for for their workflows and inspections. Um, maybe let's talk about that's you know the journey, your journey on site, kind of like learning and getting up to speed with this technology. Uh, talking about drones in general, but also Skydio. Um, so when it comes to flight and mission planning, like I think uh, we were rehearsing or, or talking about the presentation a few days ago, and I was like, uh, you know, for me the very basics. We don't even need to need to mention airspace permits, weather, but like we do need to mention them, right? If you're just getting started. Um, there is, uh, you know, it's very easy to it's very easy to overlook certain things. But um, when you go on site, if we haven't planned your mission, it's gonna be yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I look up, you know, whenever we get a perspective bridge to to inspect with a drone, it's it's airspace, right? So in this case of Count Tillman, it was you know a part of the airspace was federally restricted, so we had to get that permissions done. Uh, but also when you're looking at maybe Class B airspace and getting closer to airports. If you're if you're having to fly in those environments, you need to start looking at waivers and permits to to actually fly in those uh, environments. Uh, but the other big thing with bridges is you know that you can usually not account for is the is the weather. Um, wind you can look at weather reports all day, but uh, bridges create this tumbling effect, and and also the environment around them create uh, gusting and and things that could go wrong with drones. So um, having that handheld on site and understanding your weather conditions is is really really important. For um, sure, yeah, well, and it, it, might, it might actually like affect even the performance of the drones. Like, um, so you can you can never be uh, you know too careful with these things. Yeah, for sure. Great, and then uh, the next thing for bridges is you know the bridge is there for a reason. Unless you have an over an underpass underneath the bridge, typically the terrain under a bridge is not suitable for uh, you know a helipad, for example, uh, for a takeoff and landing zone. So you need to account for where are we going to take off and safely land this drone. Uh, and also be able to keep our visual line of sight uh, to check, box, check that box off um, and be able to do all of our work efficiently. Um, let me just uh, take a quick break and, and go over a question here from Mark. Is there any disruption or loss of signal while the drone is in the air 
will it be able to navigate back to its takeoff and landing point automatically? Um, do you guys want to take this one? Yeah, I can help with the experience. So I, prior to Skydio, I had some experience with uh, other types of drones on bridges. And I will say the first thing I noticed, you know, putting a, a conventional drone up underneath a bridge, the GPS loss, and of course that tunneling effect we just talked about, it made it really uneasy. Uh, and you you are focusing more on the drone than you are the bridge inspection in some cases, because you're, you're focused on not hitting the bridge and losing all of your data. Uh, but with that, you know, with Skydio, there is an ability to, you know, if we lose signal in any case, it is able to come back to us and also use objective winds to come back to us. And on the flip side of that, with the manual drones on a bridge site, if it's, you know, has a pier or something in the way while it's on its way back, it may not avoid that path. Or let's say that path is impeded, even if it follows the same path, uh, how it got there, um, it may have a crash. But with the Skydio, it's at least able to do object avoidance and you can help customize where you want that safe zone to be. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the lost link procedure is better with the Skydio solution, and that's one yeah. reason why we like it, is because with enterprise autonomy, it can navigate uh, based off vision instead of GPS for returning to home. And that's a huge safety um, margin that we, we enjoy, you know, and that's one reason why we deploy the solution. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for answering that. And I just want to add on top of that, uh, with Scotty, which I think we show in one of the earlier videos, you can you can do a takeoff and landing from the hands, like hand takeoff and hands um, landing, which is very handy when you are like in a um, you know, you, want, you 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 need to you don't have the space or you might not have the time to uh, go in different locations. Um, so yeah, very easy to deploy, very um, user friendly for sure, and um, you know reliable and safe throughout your operations for sure. Um, and uh, just before we move on, I wanted to touch base on the hardware and data requirements, because um, this is something that I think people overlook when they go on sites. And it's like, it's always, the, the idea is that the more data you capture, the better. Um, but I think it needs to come, you know, like before you go on site, you need to think about what are the hardware and, and software requirements in terms of like deliverables um, and from there build your mission and identify how many batteries are you going to be requiring, you know, the software that you're going to be processing the data with. Um, maybe, Michael, what are the main deliverables that you are providing to your customers? Well, Michael and Josh, um, in your case, what were the key requirements for this inspection? Yeah, so I can talk to the baseline, I guess, for bridge inspection and give it to Josh for the digital side. But, you know, we have to understand that bridge inspection traditionally is a written report with photos. Uh, so that's at least what we need to get our data into at some point in time. Uh, but we're migrating more towards the digital world, right? So we're more moving more towards the digital twin and how are we going to deliver that to the client? How um, some clients might not have access to the 3D modeling world or have uh, the ability to process some of this data. So how will we get that data to them and, um, and essentially deliver the report in that, in that digital package? I have a question if, if I could jump in. Um, can you tell us a little bit more, Michael or Josh, like why why a digital twin, why a 3D model versus versus manual capture versus just flying the drone, capturing video, or just taking you know a handful of images? Yeah, so and you'll see 3D modeling here later, but you know with video, there, there's a time and a place for it, right? There's um, if you just want to look at a specific detail, we can go and and take a look at that, take a video, take a still photo, and integrate that in the report quite easily, uh, but. The drawback to that is we're not unless you have a scale right on the structure or very close by we're not able to put a scale to what you're looking at in the video and you're also not able to maybe uh, measure or you know annotate right on top of that um, the other drawback is you're at the mercy of how that video was captured how the photo was captured so you're only able to see what was what was given to you um, so you're not able to see maybe the environment uh, or what's going on around it uh, one example of this is you know with manual capture you might see some staining on your pier or something like that, and you might write it down as, oh, we found staining through this video, but that might be caused by a drain up above, uh, draining right directly onto the pier below. So that's where a model could come into play. We can see the causes of the defects or the things that we're seeing, uh, and not just what is the defect in the video. And I think, you know, what the model does give you is 
that actionable visual intelligence that Michael was talking about. It gives you perspective. Uh, but going into that, if you're going to create a model, you have to realize, are you doing it once or are you doing it multiple times? If you want the models to overlay, you really have to think hard about ground control. Um, if you're going to measure off that, you have to think about your GSD and your ground control plan, uh, you know, to accurately um, align that model and be able to defend it. So um, those are all things that we need to think about going into a survey. Or are we just looking um, at the structure and, you know, looking for defects? Or do we want to monitor the structure over time and use uh, machine learning to map cracks and then see how they're propagating from year to year? So you know, have to have a good idea of your deliverable going in. Um, it's not just go out and capture data and figure it out on the back end. Yeah, for sure. It's the, the, the accuracy you require, the um, pixel resolution, as you were saying, the ground sample distance. Um, so in terms of accuracy, just for those not familiar with ground control points, accuracy, resolution. Um, so ground sample distance, GSD, as um, Josh mentioned, is basically the pixel size, um, which um, is cardio because we can get so much closer than other drone platforms to the object of interest. We actually can can uh, capture submillimeter uh, pixel ac uh, resolution. And then moving on to the accuracy, we have absolute and relative. Um, we're very good on the relative accuracy. We have a GPS on board. Um, and that allows us, like, if we, the relative accuracy is very, is very handy when you don't need to, um, you know, look into that cadence um, that we were talking about, just, just mentioned earlier before. When you do need that, um, you know, where the object is in, in a, a, a place in the world and start measuring time after time, then you do need to place to have that survey grace that can be achieved with um, control points, for example, or type points or man, uh, manual time points. Um, in other software platforms. Um, cool, let me, um, before we move forward, I saw a question coming through uh, that I want to touch base on. Any interest or need in the doc program to rinse and repeat the scans on a regular basis? Um, before you answer to that, the, I, I encourage everyone to uh, Google Skydio doc. Um, is um, we've released this recently enough, and so you can imagine. I say so someone mentioned to me was a, a customer who said it's kind of like a parking garage for Skydio vehicles. Um, so it basically connects. You can place it anywhere. Uh, we have the outdoor version and the indoor version, and you can place it anywhere, and the dog will be safely kept and um, connected online. Um, so yeah, the idea will be basically for you guys. Is that something you are looking into? Um, how do you see this? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. I think. Go ahead, task, go. Yeah, I think task real time visual intelligence is going to be key as we move into a digital revolution. Um, you know, and especially for these cadence surveys, and also uh, following catastrophic events, whether it be flooding, landslides, hurricanes, uh, earthquakes. You know, that's where the doc solution on fixed assets, whether they be dams, bridges, uh, whatever. Are going to be huge and um, you know i think that's the next step um, currently you know moving into virtual twins and then digital twins um, and that's when we'll really see the doc solution take hold on a lot of assets throughout um, this infrastructure market yeah and i'll add on to that yeah i agree with josh I, I, I think in terms of a bridge inspection, we still need to be there on site, right? But um, in terms of an emergency, I think a lot of our bridge owners are starting to see the flooding that's happening throughout the US right now, uh, going into the spring season and, and possibly earthquakes. So imagine instead of having to deploy multiple teams to go check on your assets, we can deploy a dock solution uh, right there on site and be able to see real time what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis at our bridge site is, uh, is huge. So yeah, we're looking into that. Yeah, can't, can't wait to start working on that with you guys, for sure. Um, OK, so moving from manual data capture, so those videos and images, high quality images, um, into the more automated uh, data capture. Um, and that's going to answer a few of the questions that I'm getting right now in terms of, like, did we create a 3D model? Um, how is the data capture? What platforms did we use for the data processing? Um, so very briefly, 3D scan for those who are less familiar with Scadio. Let me see if I have a video here. Um, so 3D scan is the software that sits um, on our enterprise uh, subscription. And it can visually assess um, or explore, um, as we call it in the software, a specified structure. Um, so you create a binding box. 
um, and then autonomously generates and executes a flight path to ensure high data quality is captured and then that can be used for inspection and 3D mapping um, or 3D modeling. Uh, during the scanning phase, it creates an overlap heat map, uh, which I think you can see in this slide here. Not very easily, but if you Google that, there's plenty of videos that will show you, but that's kind of like the purple blurb, uh, blurb sorry, allows you to uh, see the overlap and the data capture real time combined with mixed reality. Those are the squares, is each of the pictures that the drone is taken. Um, so it basically takes away the need for any operators to have any previous experience on photogrammetry. You are literally telling the drone, this is what I want to capture, and then the rest, um, you know, Scadio 3D scan does it for you. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think, yeah, the only thing I'd add to that, you know, for bridge inspection is, you know, before you're, you're maneuvering the, the sticks around or maneuvering the, the drone around, here we're able to tell it, here's my object that we're looking for, go get me the data that I need to do a 3D model. And while we're doing that, I can also view the screen without having to fly and see exactly what, what's going on with the bridge and be able to look for those defects and things like that and really focus on the job at hand that is bridge inspection. And one thing I, I will mention there, Alicia, and I know you know this, um, you also have to consider what asset you're looking at. Concrete is very forgiving for yeah. photogrammetry, but steel girders, for instance, or if you're monitoring an area that has a homogenous um, you know, capture area like a forest or sand and so forth, you have to really increase that overlap front and side. So you do have to have a good basic understanding of photogrammetry to get a deliverable that's suitable for your process. So yeah, and this is a very good uh, thing to touch. Like, I, I guess that even looking at Standic and how you guys do the, the drone inspections, uh, someone as experienced as yourself, uh, Jaws, is like, you know, defining the data requirements as well. So like, what's the overlap? So it's kind of like helping, you know, those bridge inspector, inspectors are going to be flying drones to, to kind of like go on site, focus on those high quality tasks and don't worry about, you know, they, they, will, they will know and, and hopefully have that operational procedures that tell them, hey, this uh, 3D capture is for it. 3D modeling, so you need ADHD overlap. Um, eighty percent overlap, and and so kind of like those couple of requirements that uh, you can change with Scanio, but it doesn't fall um, on the operator. Is that fair to say? Yeah, versus a manual drone, you're not trying to estimate. Do I have 70, 70, 80, 80, which you generally just take too much. And that's the beauty of the Skydio, uh, the fact that you do set the front and side overlap and then it takes care of the rest. Yeah, so, exactly. So you, you, cannot, you can only change the overlap and the ground sample distance, which is the distance to the objects of interest. And it keeps the GSD consistent, which I think shows that helps with the stitching process immensely. Yeah, yeah. Another another component that I kind of want to mention about the 3D scan solution as well, and in addition to the automated workflow, is the edge model viewer. I don't know, Michael or Josh, if you guys want to talk about that. So, you know, after the drone completes the 3D scan mission, um, what you guys are actually seeing on your controller after? Uh, yeah, I mean, we there's a lot of different visuals you can see, and I don't there will be a video on that, but you're able to see you know, one, how is it being captured and what's the total picture of it? But what I really liked is, you know, I'm not able to necessarily be on every single controller. So when it comes back, we're able to see that extra, that model at the very end and, and at least view the data as it came in um, and see that before we say, okay, we have the information we need um, or the bridge inspector can at least look at it and say, you know, we're not seeing any hot button issues that we need to look at with the rope access. So yeah, that was really helpful. I think that's just to, before we move on really quickly, I think that's something that I hear from, you know, a lot of engineering firms, a lot of folks that are utilizing 3D scan today, right, is after the automated flight plan, you do have that edge model viewer, like Michael was just mentioning. So you see the raw images, you can actually see kind of a, a low resolution version of the model on your controller. And why that's valuable is it's going to eliminate the refly time, right? So you don't have to go back to your office, home, upload the data, process the model to see that there's a bunch of gaps everywhere. You can actually see in the field if you have full coverage of that model. Um, so it eliminates the refly time, which is very valuable. Yeah, thanks for that note, Emma and Rest. And before we show you the 3D model, um, I just wanted to mention the 2D lookup uh, functionality. So 3D Scan has um, different workflows for 
specific um, infrastructure, infrastructure types. So 3D scan will be for any type of object. We have like um, tower scan, and we also have 2D uh, both GPS and without GPS. And this one here was released a few months ago and um, basically allows you to capture, um, collect images with the camera facing directly upwards. Um, so this is the underside of a bridge. I can I have a quick video from uh, ten, Ted from Sky De Deploy who um, uh, allowed me to show this on, on the presentation today. And it shows you how the data is actually being captured underneath the, the bridge. Um, Michael, this was for you. Um, I think you mentioned several times the value of this type of catch, capture. As we saw in the slide before, the flight time was about 20 minutes for, uh, I think, almost like half of the O'Callaghan Bridge. Uh, production time in terms of photogrammetry processing was an hour, and the number of pictures was roughly 236. Um, so, like in less than two hours, um, you could you could have like very good context of your of your environment and your and your projects. Yeah, exactly, and and that's for half of O'Callan half of O'Callan and Tillman, right? So when we took look at maybe uh, a two span structure, which I've done, uh, such as the one in the video here. Typically, I've been able to knock those out in about 10 minutes of 2D scan up, be able to take it back and it, and it stitches in less than an hour. So now not only have do we have the information back from what does the superstructure look like, what does the bottom of the deck look like, but we also have the ability to take that model and then compare it over time quite easily. So, um, you know, in terms of 3D scan, you know, it's rather quick, but it, even faster is just to do that 2D up and be able to come back from the field with, you know, images that are right up against the superstructure. So again, looking at that ground level inspection that we we're talking about, if I'm just walking underneath the structure and looking up, we can see quite a quite a bit. But when we take a drone and put it maybe three feet below the superstructure and we're taking pictures and modeling that, now we're able to see even more and, and take that data back and, and be able to compare it over time. Yeah. And it also allowed us to, so kind of like part of the flight planning was, because um, the, the key goal of the inspection was the piers of the bridge, of uh, one side of the bridge. Um, but we, we kind of like wanted to explore if possible to generate a 3D model and we didn't have any control data or tie points. Um, so we were, uh, we, we were kind of like just testing this workflow. Um, and so we, decided to do the best approach was to have like a 2D upward capture. So like underneath the bridge, then we, need, we, we did, um, um, Emma actually captures very successfully the 2D upwards and downwards. And then we capture each of the peers. And the interesting part, and I'm gonna start sharing your screen, Josh, is that we put all of that data, which was about 16 flights, if I remember correctly. So the 2D, and uh, 14 of the different peers. And uh, we were able to generate a comprehensive 3D model of uh, half of the O'Callaghan Bridge, which I think it was, yeah, a massive success. Uh, Just why don't you tell us what we're looking at here? Sure, um, this is the GeneX platform. So this is one of the cloud solutions that we process this project in. And just for full disclosure, if you wanna learn more about that, uh, reach out to Russ, Brett, and Abraham on LinkedIn. You can find them in GeneX. It's a fantastic platform. Like I said, it's a great ingestion pipeline for uh, workflows like this. And we're looking at the O'Callaghan Tillman Bridge here. You know, the nice thing about this, it puts everything in perspective. Uh, we do have some areas highlighted. This is a very new bridge, so it's really hard to find distinct features and failures on this bridge. There weren't any, but we just drew some um, boxes around here so you could see representatively if there were problems, you know, how you could annotate those and so forth. But it gives you a lot of perspective on the ability to see the whole asset at one time. And the fact that photogrammetry is getting so good that it can process it, mm. you know, in one complete um, job, not individual peers, uh, that was just a major breakthrough for us. And we were really happy. Um, and a note on this, we did fly this at a fairly coarse resolution. Um, Alicia, I think it was what, 24 feet approximately. Um, so, yeah, probably. Yeah, the GSD was a little coarser, but we were um, showing a pilot test. You know, we weren't absolute accuracy on this, um, you know, mining it with AI for crack detection. This is just, um, you know, capturing the asset and showing the possibility of the technology. But we can uh, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, and having that visual context. Um, 
um, that provides a 3D model like like nothing else. Um, so do you recall the number of pictures, like the total number of pictures, Josh, for the entire data set? I think it was around 9,000. 9,000 pictures, yeah. That was it, was, it was processing less than, I think it was about 20 hours, something like that. So again, yeah. in, in a day and a half, um, you know, you could be potentially training the team that needs to go next in the fields. You could be communicating much better um, across different departments. Uh, you know, there's so much value in, in having that digital twin of your infrastructure. Um, Michael, Josh, how do you maybe, oh, what are you showing there, Josh? <laughs> how, yeah, why, why don't you why don't you tell how how we found how we found this on the side? It was so funny. We were on the car. Yeah. Michael, you were reviewing some pictures and videos. Yeah. So what Josh is kind of showing is you know how I would go through the inspection side. So one thing that I really liked about the Skydio drone uh, with the 3D scan is able to tuck itself in between the column and the rock walls that you're seeing. It's super beneficial. It's able to do that without the fear of hitting let's say you know the pier or a piece of the rock and then falling to the ground and you can see in, in josh's example we actually did find um, a drone at the base of one of the piers and possibly a casualty of, of that exact thing so um one thing that was amazing was just watching that skydio uh go around and get the full context of what that column is not just staying away from the rock wall but the entire uh capture and also turning around and looking at that rock wall so we can find defects that are possibly associated with that that could cause us problems with the bridge. So uh, quite amazing. Uh, the other thing Josh is kind of showing here too is when we can click on the model there in GNEXT, we're able to also look at every photo that was taken of a specific location. And this was really beneficial for the inspection. So now we're back in the office, we're, we're looking through what did we find here on this bridge and uh, reviewing our data. We're able to quickly move around as Josh has shown and, and look at very specific locations that maybe we have interest on and annotate right on top of the model or on top of the picture itself. Uh, the other thing I want to note here is, you know, we have some uh, video that actually came out of this as well as a, as a test run. We're able to put in that survey as well. So you can stack different surveys and different items on top of this uh, and get a total inspection uh, right out of this platform. Um, I have a question actually, uh, Michael and Joss. Um... Anthony's asking to do a 3D scan. Do you have to stop traffic on the bridge if the drone flies over the traffic lanes? Yeah. So uh, one thing to note, you know, with with traditional bridges, um, what the way I've gone about that, yes, you would have to stop traffic if you were to do a, a total 3D scan and just let the drone do everything. Um, you would definitely have to stop traffic because it would be up above the deck and possibly in the live traffic lane, but. One thing that we did here on Ocala and Tillman was we kind of divided things up and then stitched all together at the end. So every column was essentially its own subject of a 3D scan. And you can use this on other bridges as well. You can look at just a substructure and say, let's scan the substructure. Maybe let's use 2D scan up to do the superstructure. And then maybe we do a manual flight off to the side of the deck if we don't have those traffic closures to stay away from live traffic. Um, so instead of thinking of it as let's scan the whole bridge, Maybe let's scan the components and then bring all of our data in together at the end. Yeah, and exactly. just maybe worth to mention that under current uh, regulations, you are not supposed to fly over over traffic. Um, but actually, uh, Skydio has a an amazing regulatory service team, um, which you know anything that sounds overwhelming in terms of uh, getting pay permits waivers, and um, we have an amazing team that you know, supports our our customers getting a proper consolidated drone program and all the waivers and permits necessary uh, to go along with this. Yeah, but just to speak to that too, you know, it, it's part of our procedure. We don't fly over people or live traffic. You know, we would take those with the bleaks off to the side. And a lot of DOTs are actually inspecting the deck of those bridges, you know, with terrestrial vehicles and systems like that, you know. So um, the primary focus, I think, of a lot of Michael's work, and he can speak to this specifically, is the underside of the, you know, the superstructure, the piers, and that sort of thing, um, not so much the deck. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's a good point. Um, I have another question coming from Daniel. Will an engineer be able to take measurements of cracks based on a 3D model? 
I can help. Uh, so yep. one thing that we're starting to vet and, and QA is essentially the crack detection softwares that are coming out. Um, so yes, uh, those are starting to, to come to the forefront of our inspection softwares. Um, but I would say, you know, in, in this case, uh, we were more concerned with trying to vet what the notes were from previously and be able to carry those forward. Um, so yes, we're able to see those cracks and possibly measure the links. The widths, uh, unless you have a, a detailed scale or uh, possibly using AI detection, um, not able to do that exact width very easily. And, and that's where you have to be really careful too. Uh, that's where you really want to make sure your GSD is correct and your ground control um, is in place so you can actually defend mm -hmm. that data. Um, and you know that would be the workflow for that. But another thing that is great about the 3D model is the textured mesh. So if you have an area uh, that is eroding, you can actually see that depth in three dimensions versus a 2D photo where you may not get the idea of that depth. So um, it does yeah. it does have a volume behind it, which is nice. For sure. And I, I have been uh, skipping some questions that touch, you know, topics that are a little bit off the discussion today, but I will, we will be following up on all your questions directly one to one on LinkedIn or other platforms. So don't worry about that. Um, just uh, maybe like wrapping up and starting with closing remarks. Um, I like to say probably for me, one of the biggest takeaway of this project was understanding that, um, you know, like autonomous drones, um, Skydio is here to stay for inspection workflows, um, but are not going to replace, um, you know, or do bridge inspections on its own. I think we should consider Skydio drones and in general autonomous drones technology as a, an additional tool to optimize inspection workflows. Um, and I think, Michael, as you put it, um, uh, while we were there, the same way new hires are getting a laptop or an iPad, um, you would like them to get a Skydio, basically. So that's kind of like, uh, the, the, for me, it was the biggest the biggest uh, takeaway from the project. Um, let's let's go around the table and, and hear your, your last thoughts or remarks. Maybe, Michael, you want to start? Uh, yeah, I, this project, I... I tried to look back on it and find ways that we can improve. And it was quite difficult to do from the drone side. Um, it was very seamless. You know, a lot of the data was captured in, in maybe even a day and a half. Uh, and the extra day in there was to make sure we buttoned things up and had what we needed before we left. So I would say the, the sheer shock of seeing how quick uh, drones can be integrated with a bridge inspection program, um, the type of data that comes back is, is really beneficial. Um, and yeah, it was, you know, there's lots of hurdles to think about as to, where they can be deployed and, and how they can be deployed. But when they are, it's it's an absolute game changer in bridge inspection. Thank you for that. Um, Emma, you want to go next? Yeah, I can jump in. I'm going to reiterate a little bit of what you said, Alicia. But I think something that I hear often from a lot of customers, right, is they're maybe scared that drones are going to replace their job, their jobs. But um, here's the thing, drone, drone technology, technology in general, it is meant to make your life easier. It's meant to enhance the work that you do, not replace it. It's meant to give you that time back so that you can focus on the stuff that say technology can't. So I think my takeaway here is that Stantec hundred percent has this mentality. And for this reason, you know, they were able to see tremendous value in the form of, you know, it might be mitigating potential risks for their employees or, you know, cutting costs in half by reducing field time, you know, by 50%. Thank you for that, uh, Emma. And Josh, how about you? I think UAS uh, data capture is going to be uh, extremely important as all um, business units move into digital transformation, you know, and being able to safely compare uh, over time, I think we're going to see a move away from static reports and move into that digital intelligence uh, mindset, creating a common operational picture um, where we can be better storytellers to our clients, you know, and, and being able to have near real time um, asset monitoring, you know, following events, moving into Skydio Cloud, you know, though the one caveat I will say, and I think it's been brought up several times, is you do have to have a robust uh, system to support your pilots, make sure you're doing everything safely, that you're following the law, um, you know, and that you're meeting all the require requirements for your your client and you know airspace that you're flying in it's very important to do things the right way and and that's one thing we're really proud of and that's one thing that skydio also offers uh with their solutions uh which is great 
Well, thank you so much to the three of you for being here today, especially to the Stantec team. There's been a lot of work put into this webinar and I genuinely cannot wait to see what is next for Stantec and Skydio working together. Um, thank you everyone for joining today. Um, again, I will be following up on, uh, the team will be following up on all the questions and, and comments. Um, feel free to reach out to Michael and Josh for uh, all things Stantec and to Emma and just myself for anything about Scadio. Um, thank you again and uh, hope to see you very soon.